caught on camera again and again and again. A gang targeting cash points at Tesco stores across nine different police force areas. For nine months, the criminals found it easy to stay one step ahead of the law. That's because until now, individual police forces haven't had a joined up intelligence system. If one force wanted to get information from another, not only could that request take days, but vital information could also be missed. When the gang struck, by the time the lead investigators found out, it was often too late, and crucial opportunities to gather evidence had been missed. There were some tyre tracks left outside a, a cash machine on, on a particular night, which, from a, a time perspective, we didn't know about, and a cleaner actually mopped the tyre tracks away, which means that that evidence has gone forever. With the help of Tesco's in-house security, eventually the gang were caught, but only after they'd helped themselves to more than a million pounds in cash. Was it embarrassing for you? It must have been. Uh, it, it was very, very frustrating, particularly when Tesco's were coming and saying, we've had five offences and we only knew about three of them. But now police forces will be able to communicate with each other more efficiently. It's a legacy of the murders of Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman. So um, child killer Ian Huntley had been able to get a job working in a school because police forces didn't have any way to share information about previous allegations of the threat he posed to underage girls. I've discovered errors, omissions, failures and shortcomings which are deeply shocking. After Huntley's conviction, a government inquiry chaired by Lord Bishard recommended setting up a national police information database. Now, seven years later, the system is about to go live. And you, how's it looking? It's going well, actually. We're kind of 95% there. What this gives you is routinely, electronically accessible information for every police force across the country. And that cuts down the chance of people not accessing it and increases the chance that you'll pick up a name like Huntley. Now, if you're arrested and find yourself in a cell like this, you might expect to end up on a police database. But what about the rest of us? Some estimate as many as a quarter of the entire population could find themselves on the police national database. It'll hold the details of everyone who's ever been convicted or arrested, but also some people who've never even been in custody. That's because if an allegation's been made about you, or your name has come up in a police interview, that's classed as intelligence and it's likely to be on the database. So, is this another step towards an out of control surveillance society? Police say the numbers will eventually come down, but up to six million innocent people could find themselves on the database. When you're putting such a vast amount of information, information about six million people, you've never been convicted of any crime, you may well be perfectly innocent, it only clouds the issue, opens up the, the database, for example, to data loss, and really violates the personal privacy and civil liberties of millions of innocent people. I mean, the police will say this is absolutely nothing new, there's no new information here, they're just joining up databases that have already existed. Well, there's no concern about sharing information about known criminals, but when it comes to actually holding information about people who may have been you know, wrongfully arrested, or those who are in fact victims of crimes, we think that really does go one step too far. I'm authorising detention at the police station, long enough so that you can be charged with a couple of offences that have been authorised by Crown Prosecution Service, OK? Whether or not this man is convicted of a crime, from tomorrow, his details will end up on the database and 12,000 specially trained people will have access to him. But senior officers insist that the information will not be misused and that this will be an important aid to policing. Is it fair to have a database that has loads and loads of innocent people on it? The fact is intelligence is just intelligence and we know that, we're trained to understand that. Uh, it's extremely vital, indeed it's the lifeblood of policing. If the only information we could use was the stuff that's actually resulting directly from convictions, we'd have a very poor picture indeed on which to base our deployments. So we need to use intelligence and Lord Bishard helped us realise that we needed to join it up too.